I'd very much like to give the floor now to Dr. Gigi Manikad, a senior program officer, Global Programs on Sustainable Livelihoods for Oxfam. And Dr. Manikad will talk about supporting farmers' livelihoods and biodiversity conservation. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, um, Dr. Bhatti, Dr. Sabran, fellow uh, speakers, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor and a pleasure for me to be here and to share our experiences on how the Benefit Sharing Fund supports farmers' livelihoods and biodiversity conservation. Um, as has already been mentioned, um, Leading the Field is an initiative uh, which was launched in 2009 to invest in high impact projects addressing food security, adaptation to climate change, and agricultural biodiversity through the management of plant genetic resources for food and agriculture. It funds projects for smallholder farmers in developing countries with the priorities of sustainable use of plant genetic resources for food and agriculture, information exchange, technology transfer, and capacity building, and managing and conserving plant genetic resources on farm. The benefit sharing fund, some of its highlights in its third year cycle. Oh. Uh, in its third year cycle, uh, about $20 million have been invested in 61 projects in 55 developing countries. Um, it has reached over eight, about 800,000 farmers established a number of uh, community seed banks. This is a big program involving uh, 200 partners in the execution of the project. And also very importantly, uh, women are directly involved in ensuring conservation and biodiversity-based livelihoods. Next, please. Um, the Benefit Sharing Fund and Oxfam has three common partners, and I would like to highlight how farmers' livelihood has been supported through three common partners that we have. One is the Community, Te Community Technology Trust in Zimbabwe, the Southeast Asian Regional Institute in Southeast Asia, and Andes of the Potato Park in Peru. We are working under a program called Sowing Diversity Equals Harvesting Security. Our aim is to strengthen farmer seed systems, particularly on the rights, as well as the technical aspects of how they could secure food and nutrition security for climate change adaptation. It is a global program, but we are focusing on five core countries, which is Vietnam, Laos, Myanmar, Peru, Zimbabwe. We are directly targeting 150,000 households, of which 50% are women. We work in very diverse agroecologies from lowland paddy, paddy fields to high mountain altitude up to 4,000 meters high and semi-arid regions. And we work both in high and low potential areas because we want to um, show that farmer seed systems are important and do work in both high and low potential areas. Scaling up a, a program of this magnitude is quite complicated, so we work with 50 different partners and allies. We work with civil society organizations, uh, groups of indigenous peoples and smallholder farmers. We work with governments and national and international research institutes and the private sector. Our donors include the Dutch and the, the Swedish government, IFAD, and as I have mentioned, three of our partners have gotten uh, benefit sharing fund support. What we're trying to do in our program is to change the impact pathways from a cycle of disaster to a pathway where we could scale up innovation and mainstream, mainstream this. The impact of disaster starts with gross inequality and inappropriate agricultural policies where there are farmers only get inappropriate seeds that are not responsive to climate disasters we see countries with chronic crop failures and chronic poverty. And we really would like to change this. We have, um, and I'm not yet finished. Yes. Um, we have um, pathways which include a participatory toolkit on plant genetic resources for food and agriculture. This involves baseline and endline surveys. Uh, this involves uh, farmer field school curriculum for, that are crop specific. 
Our, our main vehicle are farmer field schools, which we've adopted from the FAO. And this is our main vehicle for scaling up, where we work with farmers for two or three seasons, and they are self-spreading, and we move on to the next farmer field schools. The access of farmers to plant genetic resources is very important, and we, we both uh, we work with both traditional varieties, but also uh, modern varieties from research organizations. Of course, this has to be responsive to climate change. This biodiversity is very important for farmers' um, adaptation. They use a combination, for example, of uh, short and early duration varieties to capture er er erratic rainfall, for example. Policy influencing is very important, and also, incredibly important and should be mainstream in all these pathways is gender inclusion. Because for even, for example, many of the partic participatory tools tend to be gender blind. Next, please. Um, in Zimbabwe, we try to break the cycle of disaster. As you probably know, there is recurring drought in Southern Africa. 2006 years, this year is the worst drought in, 16, in 20 years. It is affecting 4 million people. The loss of crops means not only that farmers grow hungry, but they lose their seeds too, and this is a huge threat for their livelihoods. In response, in Zimbabwe, 72 women-led farmer field schools have been established, and seeds, seed banks have been, have been established to enable farmers to have access to seeds when they have to re-sow, they, they, they have to plant seeds one, twice, three times to be able to capture rainfall. We work with meteorological data and farmers' own data to be able to tailor-made agricultural planning. We work with wide-scale introduction and ad ad adaptation of diversity and policy engagement to support farmer seed system. Next, please. As I said, we also work in high potential area where we work with farmer seed enterprise. Um, in, uh, next, please. In, in Vietnam, for example, no, uh, next, please. Yes, in, in Vietnam, um, about 19,000 farmers have been trained in farmer field schools and they train other farmers. Over 300 farmer varieties have been released. Our farmer field schools have established 400 seed clubs and they provide 30% of the seed requirement of the Mekong Delta. The Mekong Delta is, as you probably know, the largest rice producing region in Vietnam. Vietnam is the second largest rice exporting country in the world. Our farmers provide 30% of the seeds requirement, and in fact, our farmers' seeds are bigger than the private sector, who only provide 18%. The quality of the seeds that the farmers produce are of high quality. They have received many awards, and this show overwhelming evidence for policy change in democratizing research and development and to enable farmers to engage in the market. Next, please. We're doing similar things in, in Peru. This is a picture of a seed bank. And we also work with early warning system to develop knowledge and capacity to manage agricultural production and uh, related stresses. Um, next, please. Policy influencing pathway is very important. Most of the national seed policies and laws do not recognize and support, support farmer seed systems, and this really needs to change. Our program engages local to global policy influencing, not only based on evidence uh, policies, but based on real experiences of farmers in the, in the ground. And we provide models for multi-stakeholder engagement. Our ambition is to work towards a farmer's rights guidelines particularly in policy and implementation. Um, I, I'd like to end by uh, show, to, to stress that, the, that initiatives such as the benefit sharing funds is really very important and it needs more support because it really works in terms of uh, supporting livelihoods, creating diversity, both for low and high potential areas. Thank you. Dr. Manikad, thank you very much for sharing Oxfam's work on supporting farmers and their sustainable livelihoods.